We recognize, we talk around you that give voices to the masses, then we pop to your success. Listen no. to the voice of an icon. It's not government that gave it to us. We spent our good money. Our first step in the vision. By 2023, we expect to see an organization that has 1,000 Nigerians in employment. Anything you want to do, you have to have passion for it. Celebration of past and present icons on Sound Vision. Celebration of past and present icons. Lay your own legacy. Hello, welcome to your number one TV show. Wherever you're watching, we're glad to have you on the show. It's celebrity icon segment on Sound Vision Entertainment. My name is Immaculate Ese. I'm your vision host, taking you through this season. I introduce to you our icon guest, a human rights activist. President of Women Arise. She's a well known personality because of her achievements and her constant fight for humanity. I call her my woman president. I present to you Dr. Joe Okay, of the market. It is an honor to have a great personality who convinced efforts to like the society. Let me have. Thank you. Pleasure, Alice. What motivated you to enter into activism? Like, uh, how were you able to manage it and stay to this, um, this time? My motivation really is having a country that works. See, a country where justice, fairness, and equity reigns at all times. Seeing people happy. I hate suffering, even if, and I know that suffering is gender blind. Either you are a man or you are a woman, it's the same, it's the same language. Anyone who wants to suffer, will suffer. And then uh, anyone who is being deprived of so many things, I would say, we feel it the same way. If anything happens to me, I'm a woman, I feel the pain the same way a man will feel it. So the motivation, that drive, seen that. We've seen developed countries. We've even seen Africa, West Africa. We've seen where people live, where they are happy, where they are, I mean, where they conform with, I mean, what is happening in society. And I just, I was not just only interested in reading books and seeing, oh, uh, how Africa was underdeveloped and this. I want our own country to be at that pedestal and the world map that will attract respectability. So the mo that motivation is always for me to do more. Oh, that what I'm doing is not enough. Because every second people die. Every minute injustice is on. And I also remembered when I was in detention, even being detained with females, one person be, that person will be seriously beaten and one is detained in a place that the condition, I mean just small place, 42 of us are detained. I, I had my legs swollen, people will be standing. There was a, a time that when I was in Alagbo, someone died and they didn't remove her from that place for about three days. This was, the girl was swollen and everything. So I see a lot of of injustice going on. And that's why I believe that one split second can save a person's life. Little intervention can make a change. When one keeps mute, silence is not golden. We need to speak up. When we speak up, it's going to help, you know, to, to affect and change lives. And that's why nothing whatsoever can, can I ever allow to get me depressed or hold me down. And I tell people that no matter what, no one should ever get anyone depressed. One must always speak up. And then if one has that inbuilt belief, if one has that strong will, when I look at, when I remember the day we're going out on protest 
announcement of June 12th, and I was hearing takum, takum, and I had it, and I was lying with so many dead people. I knew I was not dead, I was alive. And inside me, I said, no, I'm not going to die here. I still believe that I will get her. When I heard them reading that, oh, we are going to pour seed on them, we are going to get all of them, I still believe that I will escape and I will not die. And even the gunshot I had on my leg. But at the end, because of that strong belief, when the people guarding the dead bodies left, I even thought they had killed everybody. When they left, we were looking for something to smoke because of the blood. I stood up. And when I stood up, with one of, one of our comrades who was relocated out of the country, I was said, ah, you are alive. I said, I'm alive. I said, you are alive. We tied our legs. We started running. I was skipping over the dead bodies. And I ran as if, as if my leg, you know, was, as if I was flying. So, but we escaped. And unfortunately, we lost a lot of persons. So, even escaping, I didn't take my leg for treatment. Because I was declared one said and the rest. So when you have that strong will, when you believe, there are people when we have had protests that they be hiding, you know, somewhere, and bullets will just go and meet them. So I believe that wherever anyone is, that danger, you know, is not kept away. The most important thing is one's belief, one's psychology, one's strong will is the thing that will keep. Although, unfortunately, some of the people that died also had the same thoughts, but that has always helped me and kept me away from trouble. That even when I'm in trouble and at the point of death, I will still, I will still believe that I will come out of this. Believe in yourself. Believe in whatever you're doing. Believe, have faith in yourself, in your work, in your career. What do you mean by you um, decided to do as a career? Make sure it's part of you. Where is in you? That's what uh, the people made up on the today. What are your challenges? How will you able to cope as a mother and an activist? There are challenges. And now, with what we do, um, gender based violence, you know, it's on the increase. People keep calling, we've attended to not less than 5,000 cases. And I tell people that I don't believe, I, I'm the president of Women Arise, but if a wife beats the husband and I get to know, I won't say because you are a woman. So our office, every Thursday at our annex, we attend to gender-based violence issues. And I tell you that before, this COVID, before we started this uh, COVID thing, shortly before shutdown, we had like seven men that their wives were beating, that I invited their wives. And then women, women are more. Maybe in a clinic, we might have 40 women. We have like seven men, eight, nine. So last year, they buried like five men that their wives killed. They buried up to 18 women that their husbands killed. I've left protests. The engine of my car knocked. I was, we were trying to go to a battle. A lady that killed the husband. So I can't knock. I left the vehicle with two public transport. And I got to a convoy and said, see her. She's protesting because a woman killed the husband. And she's a woman. She's not even ashamed of herself. And I said all these things. Violence is gender blind. Death is gender blind. So I fight for men, I fight for women. I fight for boys, I fight for girls. So those are the things, you know, that take my time that one will say these are challenges. How do you feel uh, as a middle aged lady, you know, you find yourself uh, among the young adults right? In secondary school, like the second baby, just like you say. How do you feel in your life? Do you know what made me? I, I, it was when I turned 40 that uh, Chief Anifai uh, Professor Wolesienka marked my birthday for it. was a birthday lecture. After that, I forgot about it. I've had the dubious pleasure of sharing tears with her. Uh, and I look forward with no greater pleasure to sharing achievements, the sense of achievement, further achievement, actually enduring achievements with her. I think like five years ago, we were driving, and I saw one lady in uniform, 
around 5.30 she was being harassed by an ice cream seller so I told our media director the one that you saw, he was the one with me I said please turn, let me go and know why this ice cream seller is harassing this girl so we turned, the girl was already crying, she put her hand inside her pocket as who? I think the 15 hour she had remaining fell and the ice cream man had already cut the ice cream for her so that man was saying you are not going anywhere again. so I asked the girl, I said after I gave 500 naira to the ice cream person, so I said you should take it. Then I gave that girl 1,000. I said, why are you still in uniform? She said, uh, it was July 3rd. Talk, talk. I said, no, when you finish, you're supposed to return home. So I just remembered. I said, today is July 3rd. So I told the uh, media director, I said, I said, what's the name of your school? She told me. I said, well, when is your assembly? She said, I think it said 7 or 7.30. I said, where do you buy uniform? Uh, she said, just describe the place. I said, where can you sew it? She said, no, there, there's somebody called Yabulu. That person will sew it for me. So I looked at my time after five. I said, okay, thank you, thank you. I just I said, you know one thing? I think I'm going to mark my birthday in school. And it's already five. Drive to where we'll get uniform. So we drove. And we got there, we got to the tailor. I, I called the name of my school. I said, uh, please, I need school uniform. So that person said, for who? So this, I said, for me. He said, okay. GSS, I said, yes. So she called the material for me. So Amina said, where can she sew it? He told me the same description. So we went to the place. And I told him, you know, when we are talking, I contact the person will not say anything because most people are used to you know that. So we got there and then uh, we saw that woman he said, we want to make uniform. He said, where is the person? He said, see, I said, she. She wearing trousers. He said, yeah, he said, ah, okay. Anyway, yes, what class did you go? He said, uh, just two. I said, from just two. He said, just two. He said, okay. How old is she? He said, 13. He said, and look at her. My 13 year old daughter is in GS3. And look at this one. You. So after she started, she talked, talked, talk, called her daughter out for me. So he started measuring the thing. I said, Oh, it's too long. He said, I will use backhand to slap you. you, have, you, you the, but it's too long. You want to wear shirt? That's why I'm wearing trousers. When he closes from school, bring her here. Could come and learn how to sew. I will help you discipline her. That next time, and you know this, look at this useless thing you put on your head. You, you weave your hair, you... So talk, talk, talk. After, I saw one man, that man would look again, he would look down, look, look down. So she measured him and he said, we want to come and collect the uniform by 10. He said, you pay double. So the, the guy agreed. He said, you come back 10 o'clock. 11. So by 11, I came back to the office, he went. So I gave magazine. So they got to the place, he gave the magazine to the woman. The husband said, what did I tell you? This person looks like a person I see on television. This your mouth will kill you. <laughs> so, in fact, she has sewn the cloth like bang. So she then started re, you know, re-sewing it, did everything. So that guy waited after one hour. So she gave the cloth to me. So that was her. The following morning, I sent people to school. I said, please go and meet tell her that I want to mark my bed. Lucky enough, that principal said he knows me. So I called a few persons, called a few media. I went there. There was no rehearsal or anything. I just went there, went straight to my class. I went to one of the teachers, knocked my head and said, uh, look at what is, I used the beret to cover my head very well. He said, look at this one. So he said one person was uh, taller than me. So they arranged. And I said, I looked at me and kept quiet. So the people there were, you know, so after the principal, in fact, he said, we have a new student in our midst, just been transferred there, he's in GSS, after that. So I came out from the, he said, today's our birthday. So, uh, principal, thank you. Uh, my class teacher, good morning, ma. Uh, I can see my class teacher. Ah, and I can see my colleagues and then gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen.
I will speak for five minutes. I'm still Joe Okay Dumakin celebrating my 12th birthday today. Hey. Some other people started coming. And that was how I started. After that, I went to my class. I stayed, I stayed for about three hours, swept the class with them, arranged the lockers, went for a Greek class. All of them, Joe, Joe, they were all running, we were all playing together. So, and some of the few things I said was uh, during this uh, anti drug campaign. I tried to, you know, sweep with some of them. So, a lot of them saw me, you know, some of them didn't even believe, they still believe. Some people say, I'm older than you, Joe, this, that. So, I had a lot of friends there that I mentor. Even when I was leaving my class, the head girl was crying. She said, why? Why? Stay with us, Joe. Please stay with us. On behalf of my school, the new Your name, 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 name is Obide Buchinazan. I represent this gift on behalf of our school. I wish you a happy birthday, long life and prosperity. So, and that was how I started. So each year, I've marked my GS2, GS3. So, SS1, SS2. And then because of this COVID, so maybe not this year, next year I will repeat, I will repeat the class. So, but the thing is that I've been able to have, I have a lot of friends, you know, they call me. Some of them have been inspired. I've helped to, there was one particular friend of mine who told me, my classmate, my SS1, that he, he saw Uncle going and he saw him, he went to the soccer way and he was sniffing that sock away. So he too did that and he found out that each time he, he sniffs sock away, when he gets to school, he's always very bold. So that's what that boy has been doing. And he confided in me and I said, ah, no. And I was able to take him off it. And one person said, it's my latest spirit that a lady that she always sniffs to make her high. So I like the young ones, you know, catching them young and helping to mentor them. So I know a lot, a lot of lives. You know, I've been changed, transformed, and that made my day. Anyone that comes your way, anywhere you find yourself, humble yourself, appreciate everybody you meet in your journey of life. Dr. So Joe, um, how do you feel to be recognized internationally? You, you know one, one thing, uh, Immaculate, all the things that I've done in life, I've done all those things not even knowing that anyone takes note of all that I do. So, I've been recognized at the international level, but the one I will never forget was the International Woman of Courage. The seventh annual celebration of the Secretary of State's International Women of Courage Awards. During the past 20 years in Nigeria, Dr. Josephine Odumakin has handled more than 2,000 cases of government security agencies violating women's rights. These cases include everything from negligence to assault and killings. As the president of the Campaign for Democracy, she has personally led almost every protest, march, lecture, and workshop to encourage the rule of law and democracy in Nigeria. She has been arrested or detained 17 times but she has never stopped crusading for the rights of the Nigerian people. Receiving an email as you proceed to the U.S. Embassy, and I got there, I, somebody was there to receive me. I was given a visa. I was told not to mention it to anyone, and that I'll be traveling, I'll be going to the U.S. So, we we'll first uh, stop by at Atlanta, getting there, was in Philadelphia, went to San Francisco, went to about, about 10 or 11 states. But on that day, that was to be honored. That system, the U.S. system, that has given hope to the world, standing at the same stage with then the president, the former president of the United States, Michelle Obama, the U.S. Secretary of State, former John Kerry, and seeing people, I felt humbled. I felt so anything that I would do, we should continue to do it without knowing that anyone is even taking note of that. And that was when I was honored 
with the International Man of Courage. And that I've been the first and the only Nigerian that's been honored. The, after seven years, after the inception of that award, to honor the women that have distinguished themselves, that have fought for women's rights, that have been able to empower women, and have been able to bring about a world where justice, fairness, and equity reigns at all times. So I got that award. Any time they were to pick me from the hotel, it's limousine that would pick me up, we would go, at times we travel by road. But towards the time I was to return to Nigeria, a taxi driver pulled up and he said, I saw you on CNN yesterday. I thought that your country is only corrupt people that they have there. But seeing you has recruited my own that Africa will be great. You know, that one, I didn't eat that day. I felt, I felt so happy. You know, because I don't have any other country except Nigeria. So, uh, it, it helped me. I mean, it was like a soothing balm. And it energized me in, you know, rededicating myself, my life to the struggle. And as the popular saying goes, the struggle continues for a better Nigeria. And also ensuring that anything one does, you do your work, people view your program, they look at you, oh, and Makume, you know, so you, you won't even know when a call will come. Uh, so all the, each time I receive an award, it's a wake up call for me to do more. And that is what I've been doing up to today. Lastly, the pandemic uh, situation, COVID-19. As a human rights activist, someone who believes in equal rights and justice, how can we eradicate the women? I mean, what's the way forward? I really think that the way forward is for us to know that we are equal, especially in the case of, of Floyd, where I can't breathe. I mean, black lives matter, and that's what we should know. All those who perpetrated the heinous acts, where are they now? But if they know that everyone's lives matter, they won't put their career in jeopardy. They won't kill with such level of impunity. So black like matter. Let's see all of us. There's no one. When we caught, it's the same blood that all of us have. We should have that at the back of our mind. And back to our own climb. We see the way, the audacity. People get raped after being raped. Their mother. Look at Owa. Look at Barakan. Look at up to today. This the, that vicious circle is still going on. I want parents out there. Let's train our young ones very well. If you are a father and you are a master. Your soul will grow up and become like you. And our young girls over there, let's not allow anyone to lure us into anything. And if we see, we, we should know that those who manipulate us are the people that are very, very close to us. So anyone, parents, let's try and, you know, sex education. People think that, oh, it's a taboo. I don't want to talk about it. It's very important we tell our, our young ones not to do that. We see that there's no hiding place. Barakat was killed in the father's house. Who was killed in the church. Some people are killed on the streets. So all of us, this is the time. Yes, we have enough laws. We have the criminal penal code. We have laws to take care of this. A lot of awareness must be carried out. Education must also be. And the judiciary will want to plead that they should dispense off with cases so that when the, perp the perpetrators are brought to book, it will not embolden the others but it will serve as a deterrent. Anything evil is strongly condemnable. Let us all speak in one voice and condemn this evil going on as rape and as uh, discrimination. Uh, and lastly, the, the, uh, the COVID-19, we see that everything, I mean, look at uh, as we mask up ourselves. Let us ensure that you know, social distancing, let's put it in place, let us protect ourselves. Those who have underlining ailments, let them be sure that they protect themselves. And if we see, you know, anyone that we think that person, uh, vulnerable people, let's always, there are helplines we can call, there are numbers that we can call, let's ensure that we do that. COVID-19 is real, it's not a scam.
let us all brace up. People we have lost lives now. So people must brace up. A more isolation center must be built. And for those thieves that have been stealing all those palliatives that are given to the poor, remember that those people are bringing costs on their head and nemesis will catch up with them one day. All right. This is what we got reporting of our today's edition on celebrated icon segment on foundation entertainment. It's been an amazing time with Dr. Joe, a human rights activist, the president of Women Arise. I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope you were able to learn one or two during the discussion section. Join us on our social media platform on Facebook, Fenetis Plus Media, and on Instagram, Foundation on Desktop, EMC, on YouTube, Fenetis Plus Media. And of course, join me on my personal Instagram handle, Immaculate underscore I said that again, Immaculate underscore Remember to stay safe. Don't step out of the door unless it's absolutely necessary. And if you want to step out of the door, mask up like me, wash your hands, and sanitize your hands. This is the only way to keep safe and to stop the spread for COVID 19. I am your host, Immaculate Nature. It's found to show entertainment to be loved.